There's a new article that just came out about Ocean Gate. The Titan submersible disaster was years in the making. New details reveal. And I'm going to cover some of my favorite parts from the article because it gives a lot more insight into David Lockridge and even PH Nargelet. All right, so let's talk about David Lockridge. So as a reminder, he was brought in to essentially make sure that everything was safe. Lockridge had been watching the sub's progress with ratcheting alarm. He'd argued with OceanGate's engineering director, Tony Neeson. OceanGate had responded by refusing to let Lockridge examine the work on the sub's oxygen system, computer systems, acrylic viewport, O-rings, and the critical interfaces between its carbon fiber hull and titanium end caps. Mating materials with such wildly divergent pressure tolerances was also not advised. Neeson did not respond to requests for comment. Lockridge listed more than two dozen items that required immediate attention. These included missing bolts and improperly secured batteries, components zip-tied to the outside of the sub, O-ring grooves were machined incorrectly, which could allow water ingress, seals were loose, a highly flammable petroleum-based material lined the Titan's interior, hosing looped around the sub's exterior, creating an entanglement risk especially at a site like the wreck of the Titanic, where spars, pipes, and wires protrude everywhere. Yet even those deficiencies paled in comparison to what Lockridge observed on the hull. The carbon fiber filament was visibly coming apart, riddled with air gaps, delaminations, and Swiss cheese holes. And there was no way to fix that short of tossing the hull in a dumpster. Given that the hull would be seeing such immense pressures not yet experienced on any known carbon hulled vehicle, we run the risk of potential interlaminar fatigue due to pressure cycling, Lockridge wrote, especially if we do have imperfections in the hull itself. The hull would need to be scanned with thermal imaging or ultrasound to reveal the extent of its flaws. Non-destructive inspection is required to be undertaken and subsequent results provided to myself prior to any in-water man dives commencing, he added, digging in his heels on the scanning. This would reveal any weak spots and provide a baseline that could then be used to check for signs of fatigue after every dive. The OceanGate engineering team does not plan to obtain a hull scan and does not believe the same to be readily available or particularly effective in any event. The company's lawyer, Thomas Gilman, wrote in March 2018. Instead, OceanGate would rely on acoustic monitoring, sensors on the Titan's hull that would emit an alarm when the carbon fiber filaments were audibly breaking. In the lawsuit, OceanGate cited its grievances. According to the company, Lockridge had manufactured a reason to be fired. And this part's pretty funny. In 2016, he had mooned through the large viewing window Tony Neeson and other members of the OceanGate engineering staff through with whom he had been arguing. He had repeatedly refused to accept the veracity of information provided by the company's lead engineer, and repeatedly stated he did not approve of OceanGate's research and development plans, insisting, for example, that the company should obtain a scan of the hull of Titan's experimental vessel prototype to detect potential flaws. Now unemployed, distressed by OceanGate's allegations and beset with legal bills, Lockridge was in a vulnerable position. He countersued for wrongful termination and sent his inspection report to the U.S. Occupational Safety and Health Administration. OSHA, in turn, passed it to the Coast Guard. Ironically, Lockridge had saved Rush from himself at least once before. In June 2016, Rush piloted OceanGate's shallow diving sub, the Cyclops-1, to the site of the Andrea Doria, a hulking 700-foot ocean liner, an epic entanglement hazard that had sunk in 1956 off Nantucket in a patch of the Atlantic known for its murky fog and seething currents. The ship lies in 240 feet of turbid water, cobwebbed with discarded fishing lines. At that depth, it is accessible, and just barely, to advanced scuba divers, 18 of whom have died there. Rush was headed down to capture sonar images of the shipwreck, with Lockridge and three clients. As chief pilot and the person responsible for operational safety, Lockridge had created a dive plan that included protocols for how to approach the wreck. Any entanglement hazard demands caution and vigilance, touching down at least 50 meters away and surveying the site before coming any closer. Rush disregarded these safety instructions. He landed too close, got tangled in the current, managed to wedge the sub beneath the Andrea Doria's crumbling bow, 
and descended into a full-blown panic. Lockridge tried to take the helm, but Rush had refused to let him, melting down for over an hour until finally one of the clients shrieked, Give him the f***ing controller. At which point Rush hurled the controller, a video game joystick, at Lockridge's head. Lockridge freed the sub in 15 minutes. Alright, so let's just stop right there for a second. I think we all knew that Stockton Rush had a lot of problems. But this is just showing him going into a fit. And imagine you're down there with your employee and clients. And you start to lose it. It's insane. And here's an excerpt that refers back to the letter from the Marine Technology Society. Where they basically told Rush, hey, you gotta stop doing this. It also mentions Patrick Lahey, who's the president and co-founder of Triton Submarines. Rush ignored the fact that the letter was signed by Patrick Lahey, a man who forgot more about man subs yesterday than Rush would learn in his lifetime. Lahey had not only signed the letter and warned Rush repeatedly about the Titan's dangers, he also quietly paid the Lockridge's legal fees in the hope that the inspection report would be dissected in court and made public. But to Lahi's bitter disappointment, Lockridge decided to settle, withdrawing his OSHA complaint and agreeing not to discuss OceanGate publicly in exchange for being left alone. I think Stockton had really intimidated him and frightened him, Lahi said. I certainly would have continued that fight because I believe you take something like that right to the end. But he didn't want to, and I knew it wasn't my decision. And here's a couple paragraphs that also mention Carl Stanley. On the Titan's second deep dive test in April 2019, an attempt to reach 4,000 meters in the Bahamas, the sub protested with such blood-curdling cracking and gunshot noises that its descent was halted at 3,760 meters. Rush was the pilot, and he had taken three passengers on this highly risky plunge. One of them was Carl Stanley, a seasoned submersible pilot who would later describe the noises as the hull yelling at you. Stanley was no stranger to risk. He'd built his own experimental unclassed sub and operated it in Honduras. But even he was so rattled by the dive that he wrote several emails to Rush, urging him to postpone the Titan's commercial debut, less than two months away. The carbon fiber was breaking down, Stanley believed. I think that hull has a defect near that flange that will only get worse. The only question in my mind is will it fail catastrophically or not? He advised Rush to step back and conduct 50 unmanned test dives before any other humans got into the sub. True to form, Rush dismissed the advice. One experiential data point is not sufficient to determine the integrity of the hull, telling Stanley to keep your opinions to yourself. And finally, let's talk about PH Narjale because everyone has still been asking why would someone who's so experienced know so much about the Titanic and has been on so many dives, why would he go on the Titan? Let's see what Lahi had to say. It's not that Narjale's friends didn't try to stop him. Oh, we, we all tried. Lahi said, I tried so hard to tell him not to go out there. I f***ing begged him. Don't go out there, man. It's that Narjale knew everything they were saying was true and wanted to go anyway. Maybe it's better if I'm out there. Lahi recalls Narjale saying, I can help them from doing something stupid or people getting hurt. In the implosion's aftermath, the French newspaper Le Figaro would report that Narjale had told his family that he was wary of the Titan's carbon fiber hull and its oversized viewport assessing them as potential weak spots. He was a little skeptical about this new technology, but also intrigued by the idea of piloting something new. A colleague of Narjale's explained to the paper it was difficult for him to consider a mission on the Titanic without participating in it himself. So this just confirms again what we all knew, that everyone tried to stop PH, but he loved the Titanic so much he was so addicted to it that he couldn't help himself. He just had to go down there as many times as possible.